Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 264. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Good evening, Norman. Evening to you too. How are you doing? Ah, really, 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 really tired. Oh no. Did I sleep well? Oh, it's not a matter of sleeping well, it's just a matter of sleeping enough. So I'm guessing not then. Oh, it's just more so, you know, there's only so much you can get done in a day, and there's only so many hours, and you want to live a full, fulfilling life, and then you realize, oh, yeah, sleep's got to fit in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, true, 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 true. Oh, uh, you could always remove sleep from your mandatory four move list. Uh, I don't know, man. Continued consciousness does things to people. <laughs> mm, true. I'm pretty sure the last time someone went uh, days without sleep, they ended up inventing, like, uh, Windows ME. Oh, no! <laughs> Anything but that! <sighs> but anywho, uh, let's get on to the news. But before that, hey, Wills, have you seen the Equestria Girls short special that just came out? Yeah, Dance Magic. Uh, that, but that hasn't been released in English yet, though. Yeah, It's still in the Polish... Polish got it first, right? Yeah, yeah. Poland got it first, and uh, some good guys out there have dubbed it, or sorry, uh, subbed it. So you can read the subtitle. So yay! So I'm guessing not, right? So the so the only people who are going to be interested in this are those who read uh, subs on anime and whatnot. Only now it's Polish <laughs> anime. <laughs> kind of. <sighs> Well, if you're not interested in uh, watching that, you can always read the book. There's going to be an Equestria Girls book out uh, entitled My Little Pony Magic Magic Everywhere. So by the synopsis I found online, uh, this is a 208-page book that covers all three specials. So it's going to basically have uh, everything that's going on. Uh, in the three specials in one book. So 208 pages. Gotta wonder how big the font is. Eh, probably the standard size teen tween book kind of thing. Maybe around a 12 or 14 font? Nah, nah, it's gonna be 21 font in Times New Roman or, or if they really wanna insult everyone, Comic Sans. Nah, they should use Papyrus! <laughs> Or maybe their great grandfather Helvetica. <laughs> Helvetica. Uh, I personally like bangers. Bangers are fun. Or you can just really annoy, annoy everyone and have it be party bus. <laughs> <laughs> Big old uh... fat font. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but still, the book here is, well, kind of fun if you're interested. Uh, it's not out yet, but it's out for pre-order now on, well, Amazon. Where else? For the low, low price of $9.99. $10. <laughs> what do you think? Cheap? Wow, Norman. The deals are just selling themselves. <laughs> I, I don't think you're going to buy this one then. <laughs> I'd rather watch the show itself. I mean, if this was an art book on the, the if they were selling like a uh, Equestria Girls uh, Bible art book showing like storyboards and stuff, that would be my shtick. Mm, true, 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 true. I, I would buy that too. But anywho, uh, at least um, the English dub of the series will come out soonish. For a given value of soonish. True, true. But at least um, the Twilight there, like, um, Twilight's, uh, Equestria Girl Side Twi would be rocking her own digs. So that's cool. Yeah, well, she's wearing Twilight Sparkle, Princess Twilight's outfit, so oh. it's... Eh, no, 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 no. She's wearing something else. Like, um, she's wearing her own thing. Oh, well, it kind of looks like the same outfit. But then again, it's small and a blurry JPEG image, so you'll forgive me for that. That's yeah, true. But okay, uh, the JPEG image that is on the book cover does not represent the finished product. <laughs> but uh, moving on to the second news on the list is, well, talking about Twilight, we go on to Tara Strong. Um, Tara Strong plays Twilight Sparkle and she plays a lot of other roles. Lots and lots of other roles. Yep. She's basically the Wendy Lee of uh, cartoon voices. 
The one you'll be surprised is she she played Timmy Turner from uh, Freddy or Parents. <laughs> and also uh, the baby fairy on that same show when the show was running out of ideas. Yeah, and also Ben Tennyson from Ben 10. And Harley Quinn from the Batman video games. <laughs> and also from the television show too. Did she? Did she play Harley Quinn in the original Batman series? Yeah, she was the original, she was the original voice actress for Harley Quinn. Hmm, cool. Awesome. She's the quintessential Harley Quinn. Her and Mark Hamill are considered the, the Harley Quinn and Joker. Yeah, the, the OTP, as they say. Which is why anytime they're at a convention, everyone wants to get the two of them to act like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, but, um, talking about, um, Harley, recently there's a new game that came out, um, Injustice 2. And Injustice 2 is a DC beat em up where the best of the best of the DC universe go at each other's throat. And it's made by the same group that does uh, the Mortal Kombat franchise. And surprisingly, they're doing a lot better of a story. Their video game has a lot better storyline than the recent DC movies. That's kind of <laughs> sad. A fighting yeah. game. A fighting game that does not even have focus much on story has a better storyline than the movies. Uh, in all honesty, the Netherrealm way of storytelling in fighting games, they're one of the best. Even Capcom Street Fighters copying them. Oh, wait, wait, Norman, I know why they're doing so well. Because they why? actually show action in their movies. <laughs> yeah, that is also true. But um, one of the few things that I like about the game is that it's... uh. Pre-battle banter. There is literally a lot of pre-banter, uh, banter, and there, a lot of it's unique, or it's unique enough to different characters. Like, they may reuse a couple lines here and there, but they at least make sense in that. I think Blue Beetle's my favorite. Really, no? Um, I, I don't remember. Who, who and who? Oh, Blue Beetle. But, but it, everything he acts like to every character is just like a fanboy. <laughs> it's, a, it's just like uh, he he meets Green Arrow. It's just like uh, oh man, ask for your autograph, old man. But uh, I think you're a bit too old for this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh wow! Or just like he 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 meets the Joker. It's just like uh, man, the Scarab is just telling me to kill you outright. Well, that Scarab of yours is actually quite smart. Then <laughs> you are as crazy as it's saying. <laughs> oh, well, how about this? Um, Harley Quinn and Mr. Freeze. Can you make me a pony? I'll make you the Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> I hope you say that. <laughs> yeah, so, a little bit of meta humor there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> Actually, Mr. Freeze, the Mr. Freeze in this universe is pretty good, too. Oh, heck, just getting uh, Mr. Freeze and Captain Cold. Uh, actually, actually, I haven't heard their ones yet. This is, I bet, I bet, I bet one of them just says, I did this first. No, me. <laughs> Let's face it. We're, we may like ponies, but we're also big comic book nerds. So we just, we love this stuff too. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. But um, let's let's get back to pony related stuff. And yeah, exactly. uh, this this thing here is funny just to see the interact. I I don't know what Netherrealm scriptwriter was thinking, but this is just so cool. It's like, can you make me a pony? I'll make the Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I I just don't know what to say. I I I I want to know what were they were thinking, but uh. And on to the last news, blind bag ponies. You remember them, right? Ah, yes, blind bag ponies. The ones where you're supposed to spend your money in hopes that you'll actually get the one that you want. But if you're actually able to read serial numbers, you're able to get the one you always want. <laughs> yes, but nowadays they don't have the serial numbers. They have a window so you can just peek through. Oh, okay, that's good. Well, but then that's kind of even more sad because then we're just going to have a bunch of twinkle shines and lemon hearts. In the box and be like, kids will be like, hey, where's the one I want? And then they'll just be left behind. But right now, um, these figures that are coming out soon, well, the real news I mentioned about Blind Back Pony is that they're going to be releasing the, um, Blind Back Pony 4D movies. Mm, cool. So yay, that, that's something awesome to, well, uh, expect soonish. 
And another interesting one is is the original series My Little Pony blind bag figures or minifigures. Oh, like G1. Yes, G1 with um, the whole... The big frumpy noses. Yes, and also, well, um, their original looks. Like you got Applejack, Firefly, Twilight Velvet, was it? But these ponies, they're three inches tall, so that's interesting. Well, there's plenty of people that grew up with the G1 series and whatnot, so having a new figures to collect, that's really got to be really nice. Yeah, at least Hasbro is not forgetting them. <laughs> but please do forget the G3. G3.5, please do. What, what are you talking about, Norman? There was no 3.5. My memory recalls no such thing. I know, that's good. What are we no talking about again? Talking. No, I have no idea. Oh yeah, movie blind bags. Yes, yes, yes. They're yes. out soonish. And I'm guessing you guys at home are wondering, why should I buy movie blind bags? Okay, here's the, here's the secret here. If you are interested in playing the Tales of Equestria uh, storytelling game, that's by River Horse and Ninja Theory. Not Ninja Theory, that's another company. Ninja something, I, I forgot their company name. But if you're going to get figures for the game, get the blind bag figures. Doesn't matter who, doesn't matter what, just get them because you're gonna use them in the, in the game for figures. So that is something interesting. Even better, if you find a figure model that you like, you could just do some repainting yourself. Well, you have to learn how to paint with very small paintbrushes, but, uh, you could actually repaint your own characters then. Also, you could work with other mini figurines as well. So, hey, it's good to have something for those 3D map CDRs, unless everybody does it on the computer, then that's kind of just a moot point. Uh, true, true, but still, um, having the minifigures is fun too, because, well, you get to buy the blind bag figures for, not for collection, how do I put this? For collection purpose is one thing, but for the fact that you can start your own D&D game or pony game, yay. And that actually would be kind of fun, though. I mean, I know some uh, D&D groups, like there's one group that actually is at a local game store here, and they, they do uh, Pathfinder and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And um, they do actually, uh, they, they use a mishmash of a bunch of different figurines from different games. I think they've even used uh, some guy's uh, collection of uh, Warhammer 40K. And I think mm-hmm. they actually did use a pony figurine once when they had a unicorn. Because, I mean... Um, the game shop, you can just sit in and watch half their matches, which, you know, I just do sometimes because they're, they're an entertaining guy for a bunch of guys to hang out with. But, uh, uh, one time they, they, they didn't use a pony figurine for like a unicorn or, or some hell beast or something. <laughs> so, uh, ne- never, never doubt the power of what minifigs people might use for their time for, uh, D and D. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, but still. Um, that's the news for this week. So let's hop on to the next topic, which is what has been entertaining us this week. So, Wills, what has been entertaining you, man? What has been entertaining me? Hmm. That's actually a good question. Not much. How about you go first, Norman? And I'll probably right, think of okay. something by the time the, that the time it rolls around back to me. So, um, I've recently bought the Tales of Equestria storytelling book, and I've been reading through it, and Essentially, it's a, well, it's a simplified version of D&D. And by that, I mean it is a beginner's friendly book for people who are interested in D&D. It straight out tell you about the character classes. Like, if you played D&D before, you'll fit in right, uh, you'll fit right in. If you understand D&D, you'll fit right in. But if you don't, this book is simple enough to get into. Yet, it's a bit difficult to kind of get everything in order if you haven't played D&D before. So a good primer if you've at least attempted RPGs before. And since this is a storytelling game instead of a, well, action-based D&D kind of game, uh, they don't rely heavily on battle. Oh, so not, not D&D 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've read the module a bit. I tried to have a game with a few friends. And it's interesting to see how they react because the story starts off with your players at the market watching um, some show pony putting on a show. Suddenly, Angel Bunny hops into one of the player characters' bag and eats one of their item. And from that point on, the player can interact with 
said element, which is Angel Bunny, and then start the shy soaps in and start to play with their quests, and it goes on and on and on. Like I've played until that part to just get, um, to just get myself familiar with the whole system, and the character creation is pretty simple. Sorry, all I can think of is he eats whatever food item you have. Uh, I don't think your I think your rabbit's gonna be sick. Oh no! Did he eat like some sort of bad piece of fruit? No, he ate my ham sandwich. <laughs> uh, <coughs> but honestly, uh, the GM will control what Angel Bunny eats. <laughs> but he can eat my fist. And then GM will ask you to uh, initiate a roll, <laughs> and the difficulty point is at twenty. <laughs> Uh, the difficulty is a 21, meaning you'll never be able to hit him. <laughs> uh, ain't the GM. Uh, playing as the GM's fun. <laughs> Best part is fudging your rolls. Okay, <laughs> you roll. You roll a one. You nudge the dice. You nudge them again. <laughs> yeah, you guys take a hit. <laughs> Which is why you always have the DM board up, so no one can see your rolls. Otherwise, yes. things get a lot worse. Yeah, and GM roll is so much fun. Uh, they're supposed to make the players go through... Well, okay, in D&D, I understand that the GM wants the player to succeed yet fail at the same time. And in this book, you just want to get the story rolling along. So you can fudge it to where... okay. I know my players are jerks, so I have to reel them in a bit. But at the same time, I want them to succeed so they can progress the story. So I'll fudge things here and there, and I'll quickly move in some key characters to go in and, yeah. So to be fair, sometimes not having a GM board and everyone knowing everyone's roles can lead to some very hilarious things. Like in one case, like in one case where, uh, this paladin and a, and a, and a goblin were in a fight, but the thing is, both characters uh, were rolling twos and threes and ones <laughs> back and forth. And after the four, and after the sixth time uh, 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 of them both rolling like you know threes and missing, the GM says the goblin halts his uh, halts his attacks and drops his weapon and says, "Brother in arms, finally I found someone as terrible at this as I am." <laughs> The two of you bond over the fact of how terrible fighters you are. Not that it's over. <laughs> I love D and D because of those stories. Oh, exactly, man. <laughs> oh, uh, but still, um, definitely uh, something you're... people want to check out if you like D and D. Well. The MLP storytelling game is a good starter for very heavy role-playing influence. But if you want to have action combat, whatever it is, I, I think the new 5th uh, edition, was it? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't followed the Indian years. Yeah, I, whatever the newest one is, um, it's a bit friendly in terms of how they start. Because I think you have a starter kit. Select a character and take the starter kit and there you be be with it like yeah you can straight out go with that um obviously you can pick what you want but that's uh, for more experienced players but if you're still new into the game just pick the starter kit play along and learn the game in- initially yeah but anyway, who, will, what about you yes you're able to see that's perfect for the poly one Except alicorns. There's a huge rule in the book stating that alicorns are a big no-no. Oh no, I can't play as Razor Wing Knight Death Wish. My red and black alicorn OC with bat wings and slit eyes. <laughs> and he's got and a mane he... made of fire, only it's not hot, it's cold, because it's cold like his heart. <sighs> oh wow. Anywho, Wills, what about you? What? A couple things, some small things. Um... Mostly just reading and uh, simple games. Um, it's a free-to-play um, idle game called uh, Soda Dungeon. And while it isn't so much an idle one, as you can play it, and there's a little bit of strategy, you mostly can just set the thing up and let it play in the background while you let other stuff go on. It's, it's cute and silly enough to, you know, have some fun with it. There's a free version on Newgrounds, and there's a free version on Steam, but the Steam version is superior because it has a lot more content. Hmm. 
you can actually spend money to speed up progress, but <laughs> I'm not spending the money on a free game. What do I look <laughs> like, a League of Legends player? <laughs> uh, 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 loot boxes in Overwatch. <laughs> oh, loot boxes in Overwatch. Don't get me started. Don't get me started on the loot boxes in Overwatch. But um, as for what's been occupying most of my time, it's mostly been reading uh, uh, books and fan fiction. Um, books I've been reading the uh, Dresden Files series. Mm. And uh, for fan fiction, there's a really good one. If you like drama, if you like mystery... And if you don't mind humans, there's a fan fiction called Pandemic, written by A.S. Geek 2012 on film fiction. Uh, the story basically goes that uh, it's a it's a two sided story where uh, it posts two chapters, and on one chapter will be the human side of the story, and on the other chapter is the pony side of the story. Um, basically, it goes that. Uh, on the human side, uh, there's a small town in Colorado. It's basically just a very small, unassuming town. But when influenza strikes the town hard, it's a little more than a statistical blip in the typical flu season. And no one thinks any more of that until the infection passes. And then other symptoms begin to manifest. Like brightly colored hair and ears shifting shape. Dun 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 dun. And meanwhile, what should have been a routine trip to Canterlot, uh, Twilight Sparkle stumbles upon a strange anomaly which turns into an all-consuming conspiracy mystery. And she discovers the complex web of magic stubbornly maintaining this mystery secrets. And she goes worried it could mean for herself and her family. And these two stories basically are connected in a very dark and twisted way, and it's a, it's a little bit of an AU. I mean, you find out about halfway through it's a little bit of an AU, but, um, it makes sense. And, um, the, uh, the other thing is uh, Equestria Girls did not happen, but they actually incorporate elements from Equestria Girls into this. Ooh, those are uh, always fun. And, and I can't say more than that without spoiling it, but um, they have reached a point where the chapters are starting to collide with each other. And it's actually really well done. I mean, I love first contact scenarios. And this one's probably the worst you can think of, because not only are, well, I mean, it's kind of obvious. People are turning into ponies, but, you know, there's a big conspiracy on the equestrian side of it. So it's a gigantic mystery and a heart-stopping thriller of trying to get both sides to come to a good end, but without everything devolving into chaos and madness. Uh, that sounds fun. I have it on my want-to-read-later list, so I've almost read everything on my want-to-read-later list. So probably I'll start that one up soonish. Oh, man, you're the exact opposite of me. I have seven... 136 stories on my read it later list. Uh, the thing is, after a few years of not reading it, I consider it as not interested. <laughs> if we're talking about fanfics, um, one thing, or oh, one story I've been reading is Little Stars by Shadowmain PX-41. Uh, initially, uh, essentially it's the CMCs wanting to go to the Fall Formal, and said Fall Formal has a cosplay contest. And, Guess what? They dress up as the Dazzlings, as a cosplay idea. It's a very interesting story, uh, comedy, Equestria Girls and whatnot. So it's fun. Um, I'm reading it. It's um, only a few chapters long. All I can think of is just the Dazzlings then show up. Yeah, we're suing you. <laughs> what? Well, they do show up. They do show up. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but uh, from what I've read of the author, he said that he just saw this one art by an artist. Let me see if he credits this artist or not. I do remember one joke. I can't remember what fic I read it from, but it's like an aftermath of the Dazzlings. They've had to used to getting being normal, and they can't, you know, you know, use their magic anymore. Mm -hmm. And to which then one of them says, is "Like we've tried singing again, but auto tune isn't the same. It's just not the <laughs> same." Uh, that's funny. Uh, and if you're talking about that, I read one here. It's called The Dazzlings Are Insane. It's a slice of life after what happened to the Dazzling losing their powers. They still go to school. And let's just say that they're, <laughs> they're not, they're just crazy. Just so, so crazy. Yeah. But those are fanfic recommendations. Um, pandemic is something on my want to read later list. It's 33 chapters long, and I think the average chapter for a story is about 5k. 
Well, actually, the average is uh, more like seven. Seven is closer. Still, um, if it's that long, that means it's going to be jam packed full of adventures. Yay! Oh yeah, it's actually currently almost two hundred and fifty thousand words. Uh, that may be um, intimidating for some readers out there, but you know, it's like give the first chapter a try. If it pulls you in, then it pulls you in. If it's not, then well. The then you have terrible taste and you don't know how to read. Boo! <laughs> Get better, don't scrub. S- don't say that to the audience. I don't say anything to the audience. Get on my reading level. Oh, you. Come on, Norman. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, everything is Dark Souls. You gotta, you gotta take life hard as it is. Reading? It's like, yeah, I read Moby Dick every day. <laughs> oh, oh. <clears throat> no, man, no. Jules Verne and C.S. Lewis, they are like my, they're like weeklies compared to the stuff I read. But anywho, <laughs> uh, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can always contact us at themiashowgmail.com. And if you want to reach us on the Twitters, uh, the show is at the MBS show. And as for me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. And Wills, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Film Fiction at W-I-L underscore I underscore Z-I-N or on DeviantArt at W-I-L-I-Z-I-N for either my art or my writing. Alrighty then. And if you want to support the show, we are also available on the Patreons. Um, the Patreon is www.patreon.com slash the MBS show. Um, at a dollar, we you a thank you and all access to, well, um, future release, uh, what's not future? It's like, pre-release kind of not really pre-release um, sneak peek to um, the review show uh, a day before it comes out and a few exclusive things over there like undeleted episodes and five bucks will get you a topic of discussion or a review for us to review and everything listed below so if you want us to talk about for example um Dark Souls, we can try. It doesn't mean we are good at it, but we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not good at it. Tell me you can talk about the lore and everything. Uh, most of the lore. I'm not super, I'm not, I'm not dead mouse here. <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's the problem. And people expect us to talk about Dark Souls. They expect us to talk about the lore and everything and the tips and tricks. Oh, well, I, I can tell you what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you what to do. After inserting the disc, go to your machine, turn off the console. Don't, don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the uh, the old war games trick. Ah, the only winning move is not to play. Essentially, in Dark Souls, the way that the whole game runs revolves around is um, you as the chosen undead goes try to light the first flame. If you give up and stop playing... You have failed and turn into a uh, undead, and turn into a mindless what? undead. Yes, I mean, what do they call them? I forgot. Um, hollowed. I, well, yes, no, hollowed. Hollowed. Is a certain t- a, ho- a, a full hollowed is mindless undead. Yes. Yeah, so that's what you are. You turn hollowed. Uh, but anywho, um, I like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis. Nam Dracotoria, Starstream, and also myself like. Thank you for the support, guys. And also you guys at home, you can be like them and support us. Every bit counts because this show helps me every little bit. And you can also, <clears throat> and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. Also like us on the Facebook page and also you can catch us on PonyVerLife.com. Links will be in the show notes. Also we have this thing called the MBS Show review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio and also YouTube. Over there, remember what I mentioned before about the whole review thing that you can do with the Patreons? Yeah, that's where we do it. Uh, we talk about the MLP episodes, comics, movies, and um, we talk about ponies. And also, sometimes we like to talk about other things like video games and also other movies like Batman. Batman's a fun one. And also, movie of the year. Don't get start. Don't get silver started on Batman. Don't get started on Batman. I don't think silver is that heavy of a Batman fan. I think you're more thinking of um, Maddie, Matt Munchkin. 
No, no, I, I just mean if you if you get him started on Batman, he's gonna start doing. He's gonna start Adam Westing. <laughs> God, not that Batman. Oh, I... But anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been well. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Turtles. <laughs> <laughs>